Located in the Italian-speaking region of Switzerland, Lugano is the capital of Ticino and renowned for its stunning natural landscapes, with Lake Lugano taking center stage. Surrounded by rolling hills and majestic mountains, the lake provides a stunning backdrop for countless outdoor activities, from leisurely boat rides to scenic hikes. In this video, I will be sharing with you an easy weekend itinerary in Lugano and the top things to do when you're visiting during summer, so it will be easier for you when you visit the little Italy of the Swiss Alps. If you have not yet subscribed, make sure to hit the subscribe button below for more informative and fun Swiss travel videos like this. Lugano is calling and it's time for us to set off for our weekend trip. Lugano is just two hours away by train from Zurich, making it a very convenient destination to visit. Once you arrive at the train station, you can choose to either take the bus or transfer to the funicular, which will bring you down to the city centre. We checked in at the Hotel International Ola. I highly recommend this hotel because of its prime location. It's literally situated right in the Old Town and the prime shopping district and is also conveniently next to the Lakeside Promenade. Although it is a very historic hotel built way back in 1906, it has been constantly refurnished and the interiors are still new while maintaining its old world charm. It even has its own private gallery where it displays their vintage pictures, furniture and booking records from their olden days. Our room was huge with a beautiful balcony overlooking the lake and I also really like their self-service honesty bar where you can chill and have drinks and coffee here. There's also an amazing sunset terrace and a pool for you to use. After our check-in, we wasted no time to head towards the Old Town. Its architecture reflects a mix of Swiss and Italian influences, showcasing the city's unique cultural blend. The Old Town is so colourful and I feel like it's, you feel like you're in a completely different part of Switzerland. It's a little bit like Italy, but it's a lot cleaner and very colourful. We had our lunch at this restaurant called Gabbani. This is a unique place with its own formageria selling its own cheese and local products and there's also a patisserie with delicious pastries that look like art pieces. There's also a takeaway corner just opposite the restaurant so it's great for those of you on a budget since you can grab one of their sandwiches and have a picnic by the lake. I had the laxanetta with aubergine, mozzarella, sun-dried tomatoes and basil while Vince had the tagliatelle with smoked butter, crispy bacon and smoked caricotta cheese. I mean, just describing the pasta is making me drool already, so trust me, the pasta here is delicious and you won't regret coming here. With our stomachs full, we headed for our first outdoor activity by boat. Transport in Lugano is extremely easy. All guests staying in a hotel or Airbnb in Ticino is provided with the free Ticino card, which provide unlimited travel on local buses, trains along with discounted prices to attractions. This is great news especially for those of you who are travelling only with the half fare card and not the Swiss travel pass since your transport within the region will be free. We hopped onto our cruise ship from Lugano to Gandria. The boat ride itself is an amazing experience that you don't want to miss with breathtaking views of the lake and the surrounding mountains. You can buy the boat tickets in advance from the SPB app or purchase on the day itself at the ticket office. As the ship glides across the glistening waters of Lake Lugano, you will see charming lakeside villages like something straight out of a postcard. The houses are adorable, decked with flowers and terraces, and it makes me dream of retiring and moving to Lugano one day. In the meantime, all I could do is to take a deep breath and soak in the natural beauty that surrounded us. After about 45 minutes, you will arrive in Gandria. Take your time to explore this picturesque village and admire its cobblestone streets and the charming stone houses. So the whole trail uh, on Gandria is quite steep with a lot of stairs. So I personally don't think it would be very suitable for families with strollers. Look out for the signs of the Olive Grove Trail in the direction towards Castiglona. This easy, scenic trail takes you on a journey through lush olive groves and offers a breathtaking views of Lake Lugano and the surrounding landscape. The duration of the trail depends on your pace, but it typically takes between 45 minutes to an hour. Along the way, you can also stop by the many restaurants and grottos to have a drink and enjoy the views. 
will arrive at the Lido San Domenico, a nice photo spot where you can rest your legs and also take some pictures. Continue walking ahead for 15 minutes past the parking area and you will reach Castellona. From there, you can take bus 2 that will bring you back to Lugano city centre. Our next scenic spot in Lugano is Paco Ciani, one of the most beautiful public spaces in the city. This 63,000 square meter park is the green lung of Lugano, and entrance is completely free. We visited the first section, which is an English and Italian style garden lined with meticulously manicured flower beds and century old trees. If you're looking for somewhere to just take an easy stroll and unwind, then this is the spot to visit in Lugano. For dinner, we had it at Canveto Lugani's, which is a popular restaurant in Lugano known for its traditional Ticini's cuisine and charming atmosphere. We had the most amazing fresh seafood and also really enjoyed the local specialties such as the risotto, the fish dishes and also sampled great wines from the region. This is the fish we ordered and they're going to prepare it. Look at how huge it is, my gosh. And then we have another one here. Wow. Mm -hmm. It's the morning after on Saturday and we rose bright and early for a sumptuous and filling breakfast at our hotel. We set off at 10am towards Monte Bray and this is the must-see local mountain when you are in Lugano. To reach Monte Bray, you have a couple of options. First up, you can hop on the funicular that brings you straight to the top. A return journey costs 26 francs with full fare and 13 francs if you have the Swiss travel pass or the half fare card. Guests with the Ticino ticket pay 18 francs. However, there is another cheaper option for those of you on a budget. You can simply take bus 12 covered by your Ticino ticket from Lugano Central all the way to Three Pace, and from there, it is a 12 minutes walk and you will arrive at the top of the mountain. Once you're aboard the funicular, get ready for a scenic journey that will take your breath away. As you ascend up, you will be treated to sweeping bird eye views of Lugano and the clear blue lake. Guys, you really have to come up to Monte Bray because the scenery here is one of the most beautiful I've seen in Ticino. Just take a look! The weather was quite warm so we sought shelter at the restaurant next to the funicular. You can order a glass of cold beer or an apparel spritz while looking out and enjoying the feeling of being on top of the world. From Monte Bray, you will witness the stunning Swiss-Italian alpine landscapes the closest mountain being the Monte San Salvatore just right opposite and that is another mountain I would recommend to visit if you have some extra time. It's actually possible for you to hike from Monte Bray to Gandria. You just have to follow the yellow hiking signs and here it says it takes about 1 hour 40 minutes to get right. So this is how the hiking trail looks like from the start. I'm just taking a short trail down to the restaurant at the bottom because it's just a really short walk, like 5 minutes and I heard that the views there are much better To get back to Lugano, take the funicular down to Suvigliana and make another transfer descent down to Casarati From there, hop on the bus to back to the city centre it's time for lunch and we headed to La Tinera in Lugano's Old Town. Now this restaurant is really characteristic of the typical Italian grottos you will find in Ticino, where you enter and you will find a cave underground. They serve good authentic Ticinese cuisine here and I had the grilled beef entrecote with polenta which is a must try in Ticino, while Vince had the perch filet with risotto which was absolutely delicious as well. If you're having some midday sugar cravings, then head over to the Grand Café Al Porto. This traditional tea house has been the lounge of Lugano since 1903, where businessmen gather for important lunch meetings. Today, the Grand Café is still the meeting point for catching up with friends or for coffee dates to enjoy the wonderful creations of the Confessory Al Porto.
had freshened up and showered and now we are on our way to Markopte which was one of the prettiest village in Switzerland. I have mentioned it before in my last video so make sure you check it out for summer in Ticino. Markopte, the crown jewel of Lake Lugano. This village was once voted the most beautiful village in Switzerland and rightfully so because everywhere you turn is a feast for the eyes. If you have time, you should head up to the church of Santa Maria del Salso, the most famous place of pilgrimage in Ticino and one of the region's best photo op. The walk is short but demanding and we were completely mesmerized by the views of the glittering blue lake from above and so it's well worth the climb. There's also a wooden swing by the swingable project above the church which in my opinion is one of the best Instagrammable spots in Ticino. I have so much deja vu coming back to this town. The last time I came back was I think like three years ago during Covid and it still stays the same. It's still as beautiful as ever. Our dinner was reserved at Restaurant Della Torre, a romantic lakeside restaurant that is perfect for those date nights and for honeymoon travellers. Dinner was nothing short of amazing, I normally don't eat a lot of bread but the homemade bread and butter here was so good we finished them all. For our first course, I ordered the spaghettone pasta with garlic, olive and chilli pepper while Vince had the seafood pasta with clams, burrata mousse and saffron cream. For mains, Vince ordered this huge interesting octopus burger and I had some juicy lamb shack. We really enjoyed this night's meal and we ended off with an evening stroll by the lake. It's our last day and today we are going on a day trip from Locarno to the Brisago Islands. So we took a day trip from Lugarno to Locarno on our last day and so we have our baggage and that is why we're using the luggage deposit to store our luggage for the day. So this is how a large size deposit looks like. We're able to fit two of our luggage and here you have to pay by coin. Sometimes they have the option for you to pay by card but unfortunately here you have to pay by coins and we don't have it so now Vince is actually going somewhere to change for coins and then you just put the coins in and then you just lock it and you're good for the day. The smaller luggage deposit looks like this and I think you can fit one cabin size luggage properly and it is 6 francs whereas the larger one is 9 francs. To reach the Brisago Islands, visitors can take a short boat trip from either Locarno or Ascona. The boat ride is an enjoyable experience on its own, offering remarkable views of the Lake Maggiore, which is not to be confused with Lake Lugarno. One of the main attractions of the Brisago Islands is the stunning botanical gardens found on Isola Grande. The islands used to be a ruined convent until it was restored by a rich baroness called Antoinette saint Leger, who built the garden and brought rare plant species like eucalyptuses and palms. Due to financial constraints, she sold the island later to German merchant Max Amden, who built a luxurious palace which is the current Villa Amden. Today, the islands is a Swiss national botanical park and is a true paradise for nature lovers. Spanning over 2,000 square meters, it boasts an impressive collection of over 1,700 exotic plants and flowers from all over the world. This is probably the only place in Switzerland where you can find yourself walking under the cool shades of Japanese bamboo trees, inhaling the scents of flowers and herbs in the air and feeling the gentle breeze from the lake. If you're looking to indulge in a luxurious dining experience, head to the Brisago Islands restaurant inside the Villa Amden. Once you step into the mansion, you will be blown away by its elegant decor and the pure white marble hallways and staircases. But the best part in my opinion is the restaurant's outdoor terrace with its tall round arches and the gardens as a backdrop for all of your foodie pics. This mansion feels so luxurious. I think we are going to have a really incredible dining experience.
Once you're done at the Brisago Islands, you can either choose to take the boat back to Locarno or to continue on with a short tour around Ascona. Now this is a small village so I think you can easily do this within an hour or so but I recommend you to just take a walk along the beautiful lakeside promenade not to miss out on the Grand Tour of Switzerland sign as well as to admire the colourful buildings at the old town. And that's the end of the video. I hope you will come to Ticino and Lugano for a summer holiday. It will be an experience that you will not forget. If you need more recommendations on what to do in Ticino, make sure you check out my video here or here. And with that, I will see you in my next one. Bye!